we're in Ephesians chapter 1, verse four, 1 to 14. Um, what, what I do normally is, uh, and what I hope to do, is what is called expository Bible teaching. Okay. So, so what we do is uh, we go through chapter by chapter yeah. through a book. And, and the good thing about that is you don't get my opinions or the preacher's opinions. You're just yeah. going to get what the Bible's teaching. Yeah. Yeah. So starting next week, uh, in the mornings on a Sunday, we're going through the book of James. And then on Thursday, we go through Ephesians. So this is the Bible study that we did, uh, that I did on Thursday. I've yeah. just made it into a sermon. So uh, in the evenings on Thursday, it's through, through Ephesians. On Saturdays. And then Saturday, it's through James. And then after James, yeah. I pick another book and we go through it chapter by chapter. Yeah. So that way you just get taught what the Bible teaches. Yeah, yeah that's good. Uh, <clears throat> so just pray. Father, we thank you for this day. And Lord, I thank you uh, for your love. And we heard that song and we pray, Lord, that you would seal us today. Seal our hearts so that, Lord, we have a greater love for you today. Give us a, a love for, and a desire to be in heaven with you. Give us a, a greater passion for you. Lord, we just pray that you would stir us today. Refresh us today. Renew us today. Bless us today. Comfort us today. Father, we just pray that our love for you would be deeper today. And Lord, I pray that after this message, Lord, we will not be the same again. But that, Lord, we will be stronger and more passionate in love with you. Amen. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, these three are one. Amen. 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 So we read from Ephesians chapter 1, verse 1 to 14. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God, to the saints who are at Ephesus and to the faithful, in Christ Jesus. Grace be to you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. According as he has chosen us in him before the foundation of the world that we should be holy and without blame before him in love having predestinated us unto the adoption of sons by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the prayers of the glory of his grace, through which he hath made us accepted in the Beloved, in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of his grace, in which he had abounded towards us in all wisdom and prudence, having made known to us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure, which he had proposed in himself, that in the dispensation of the fullness of time he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both, both which are in heaven and which are on earth, even in him, in whom also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestined according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will, that we should be to the prayers of his glory, who first trusted in Christ, whom you also trusted after you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also, after you believe, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. It was the earnest of our inheritance, the redemption of the purchased possession, unto the prayers of his glory. So this this these passages are like the mountaintop in the Bible. It's like it's like a, a crescendo of, of grace, a crescendo of, of God's love uh, in this in, in this passage. It's like it's like a little kid uh, going to an ice cream van, and the ice cream guy gives him ten ice creams. It's like, whoa, what's going on here? And that's the blessing. That's that's what's coming in this passage. Yeah. And just to, just to start off with, just a little few things like Paul. His name, Paul, means small. Mm. So Paul saw himself as a humble person. And he's in prison as he's writing 
It's near the end of his life and he, he writes prison epistles, he writes Colossians and Philippians and Ephesians. And Colossians is very similar to Ephesians. And Ephesians was known as a, as a second to Rome in the Roman Empire. Mm -hmm. It was a really big, important place. Mm -hmm. It had a big temple, I think, it, at uh, Artemis. And it was bigger, you know, the, Arthenon, the Parthenon in, in, um, in uh, Athens, that great big Parthenon mm -hmm. at the top. Well, there was a temple in of Ephesus four times bigger than that. Mm -hmm. And it was seen as a very important city because it, it had a, a harbour that, that had ships coming in. Mm -hmm. And about a hundred years after Paul, Ephesus became to be a, a, a city that was dying because silt built up in the harbour mm -hmm. and they couldn't, they, couldn't, Stop it. they couldn't do any uh, trading. And that's how, why Ephesus began mm -hmm. to, to uh, uh, decline. But Ephesus in here is given all this blessing, and it's mentioned in Revelation. If you if you if you read, I think Revelation uh, chapter two, uh, God warns that Ephesus is falling by the wayside. Mm. So even though she had all these blessings, and in Acts Paul uh, visited Ephesus a few times, and he spent like two, I think three, two to three years mm. Mm. expounding and teaching the Bible. Mm in Ephesus and yet God in the book of Revelation warns that they're, they're losing their first love. Yeah. So it shows you that you can have all the Bible teaching, you can know it all, you can be on fire for God but yet yeah. beware lest you, those who think they stand lest they fall. Yeah. I just want to pick out four big words uh, in this chapter today. Number one blessing, uh, number two chosen, number three adoption and number four, sealing. Blessing, chosen, adoption, and sealing. Just four words today, just to meditate on. So if you go to verse three, it says, it says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. So, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath, what? Blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. Amazing. So, it's kind of like I got a packet of Maltesers. <laughs> and, um, and I can give you one Malteser. You say, oh, he's giving me one Malteser. Yeah. Or I can give you all the Maltesers. Well, God hasn't given us some blessing, a little bit of blessing. He's given all blessings in Christ. That means when Christ died on the cross, mm -hmm. He purchased all of heaven for us in the sense that all that the Father has is ours. Yeah. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who have blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. Notice that in Christ, in Christ, it, it's a term that comes time and again in Ephesians, 27 times it's mentioned in Christ in Ephesians. So all our blessings come in Christ. If you turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 12 to 13, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, Uh, verse 12 to 13, 1 Corinthians 12, okay. verse 12 to 13, I'll wait till you, till you get it. Yeah. 1 what? Corinthians 12, yep. Verse 12 to 13, it says, For as the body is one, and have many members, and all the members of the one body, being many, are one body, so also is Christ. For by one spirit were we all baptized unto the body, yeah. whether it be Jew or Greek, whether it be bond or free, we have been all made to drink of one spirit. So when it says in Philipp uh, Ephesians chapter 1 verse 3, spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ, it means we're in the body. That as we trust in Christ, we're saved and then the spirit of God comes into us. Mm. And that's what it means to be in Christ. Amen. It means that we trust Him and that we're blessed by the Holy Spirit in our lives. But it's all spiritual blessings that are being given to us. So 
we have to start to think, I think, in our minds whenever we're going through problems, whenever we're going through challenges or difficulties and we, we need something, you know, we, we might want something or need something. We, we have to get our mind around the fact that, that God has given us all things in Christ. And um, principally spiritual blessings, not the, not the material, but the spiritual. But what it means is that God's for us, not against us. Yeah. And so we have to start to think on that realm. Get at, when, when we're in difficulties, when we're in challenges, when we're faced with problems, rather than pray for that need, first of all, let us get our minds, first of all, into the realm that, no, I'm in the presence of God, and He's blessed me with all spiritual blessings. Mm -hmm. Then I pray for my need. Mm -hmm. We get our minds yeah. into that level. So that's number one, uh, blessings. Number two, chosen. But oh, before we, we, we go, before we uh, move on, um, when he says in Christ, and we're blessed with in Christ, um, there's so many scriptures, but I'll, I'll just go through them. Um, but because it's recorded, you can go through it and, and look at the scriptures. But um, in Colossians 3, 4, it says we have life in Christ. In John 20, 17, Jesus says, I go to be with my Father. And the idea is that we're going to be with the Father through Christ. So we're blessed with life. We're blessed with relationship with the Father. In Matthew 28, 20, it talks about going into all the world and make disciples. So in Christ, we're blessed in that we're to serve God. We have that service now. Philippians 1, 29 talks about suffering for the gospel. In Philippians 3.10, it talks about suffering for the gospel. So one of the blessings to be in Christ is to suffer with him. Then in Romans 8, 16, 17, it talks about our inheritance, our in heavenly inheritance. So we have a heavenly inheritance in Christ. And then we have in Romans 8, uh, 18 to 21, uh, we have the future glory of the kingdom. Romans 8, 18 to 21. So being in Christ, we have life. Being in Christ, we have a relationship with the Father. Being in Christ, we're to serve God. Being in Christ, we're to suffer for Christ. Being in Christ, we have a great inheritance. Being in Christ, we receive the glory of heaven. So these are just some of the things that we have in Christ. So that's the blessings in Christ. Secondly, chosen, the word chosen, verse 4, according as he has chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. Now, a lot of ink has been spilt over those words. Yeah, yeah. There's been a lot of debates, a lot of arguments. My advice is stay away from the arguments. What is in Scripture is in Scripture. And, and, and keep it simple. And let's look at it. It's very simple. According as He has what? Chosen us in Him before the foundation of the world that we should be holy without blame before Him in love. You can't get more simple than that. It's plain English. He chose us. So people will argue about free will. They'll argue about all these things. Yeah. But this scripture is saying that before you were even born, mm. God had you on his heart, on his mind. Now, in our minds, straight away we get our thoughts, well, what... How can God be just? Because if, if he's chosen me, well, why hasn't he chosen them? Did he send them to hell? We get all these thoughts. But my advice is not to get too deep, just to keep it simple. And it says here that before the beginning of time, God chose us. He chose you. 
What that means is there was a love before you were even born. Mm. What that means is there was a love that before, you, not only before you were born, but when you were born, there was a love that pursued you. God chooses. He chooses. John 15, 16. Let's go to John 15, 16. John 15, 16. He says, you have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you that you should go and bring forth fruit and that your fruit should remain, that whatever you shall ask of the Father in my name, he may give it to you. So it says there, the Lord did, they did not choose him, but he chose them. Yeah. Now, if you go to John 3.16, John 3.16 People say, well, I, I, I don't get this, bro. You, 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 you're scrambling my mind. But if you go to John 3.16, it says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. So God offers the gospel to everybody. Everybody's offered the gospel. Everybody has the, the, the love of offer to the gospel. So that love is offered to everybody, but God chooses in the sense that he marks some people out for the blessing. And if you turn to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 13, and uh, 2 Thessalonians Two Thessalonians, chapter two, verse thirteen. Two Thessalonians, chapter two, verse thirteen. It says, "But we are bound to give thanks always to God for you, brethren, beloved of the Lord, because God, from the beginning, chosen you to salvation through sanctification of the Spirit and belief of the truth." We turn to Luke chapter 4, verse 25. Now what we're doing here is we get scripture in context. Because there will be scriptures when we go through the Bible that when we, we read this scripture it says chosen. There will be scriptures later on as we go through the Bible that will say believe on the Lord Jesus. Yeah. That it's their responsibility to believe. Yeah. But at the moment, we're just getting this scripture in context. Yes. But later on, we'll have to look at other scriptures that will seem to contradict this, where it will say, you must believe, you have to believe. But it's important that we, we get scripture in context. Yeah. You know, and people want us to, to, to um, sweep away things they don't like. Mm -hmm. But when you do an expository preaching, you have to face text that you don't like or you don't think makes sense, mm. you know. So Luke chapter 4, verse 25, it says, But I tell you of a truth, many widows were in Israel in the days of Elijah, when the heaven was shut up three years and six months, and great famine was throughout all the land. But unto none of them was Elijah sent, but only to Sarapath, the city of Sidon, unto a woman that was a widow. Mm. So there was lots of widows, but God chose one widow yeah. to minister to. So that's another, that's an example. And if you read on, it talks about lepers. That Elisha, not Elijah now, but Elisha, yeah. only goes to Naaman and to know the lepers at that time. So it's just teaching and showing that God had God chooses. Another example of choosing, he chose Israel. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And uh, I have no problem with the verse 4 of Ephesians. But a lot of people will have a problem with that. They will scratch their heads and say, it doesn't make sense, God's not fair. But I say, 
It's in the Bible. Deal with it. It's there in the Bible, so you have to deal with it. And I would say also that we have to be careful not to argue about it. People argue about it. And in the Westminster Confession, so I've got it there, it, it warns that this is a high, high teaching. It's a, it's a very uh, meaty doctrine, a meaty teaching. And it warns that we should be very humble and careful the way we deal with this teaching. Mm. You know, it's not for people to be throwing about and arguing and, 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 and it's something that we need to study humbly and graciously and seek the Lord's mind upon it. But I think the strength of this is what it's saying is that I was thinking about this the other day. Why is this teaching that God chose us important? Because when we choose God, when we go to God and ask for forgiveness, when we turn to Him, then we find out on the other side it was God that chose us. And I think why it's important is it, it shows the greatness of God, the sovereignty of God. It shows His glory. It gives Him the glory because you don't get the glory. Yeah. It shows you His power and it shows you His love. Because it all stems in the glory of God. So chosen. So we've looked at blessing. We've looked at the word chosen. And then we'll look at the word adoption in verse 5. Just back up at 4. It says, chosen us without blame before him in love. So we were chosen to walk in... It's, uh, sorry, it says... According he has chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should, here it is, be holy without blame before him in love. So he chose us to walk in holiness. Mm -hmm. So this idea that we can be saved and do what we want yeah. is just nonsense. Yeah. We can't do what we want. It's people who think they can be saved and just say, right, I'm saved and I can do what I want. It says, no, you're to be holy. In other words, you're to be obedient to what God says in his word. I was uh, in a church uh, preaching and uh, I didn't know at the time but I found out there was two people who were lesbians who'd been married in the church as lesbians and I didn't know at the time but if I'd have known you know I would have had to say something we can't have we can't do what we want we have to do what the Bible says you know, marriage is between a man and a woman. That's what the Bible says. But all across the line today, the people are making their own Christianity up rather than following what the Bible says. So we're in verse 5. Having predestinated us unto the adoption of sons by Jesus Christ to himself according to the good pleasure of his will. So having predestined, the word predestined there has the idea uh, God has chosen us, that's before the beginning of time, but predestination is w working in time, God making it happen. Yeah. So it's definitely going to happen that you're going to be chosen. He's going to send the preacher out at the right time to get you to hear the message or he's going to send somebody or something. It's predestined, it's preordained. Yeah. Practically, it's going to work out chosen is the theoretical before the beginning of time is chose you predestination is the practical working out it's going to happen and it's going to happen that you're going to be adopted having predestinated us unto the adoption of sons so when you believed in Jesus Christ you became adopted into the family so a slave imagine a slave in Rome there they are uh, they, they, they've got no money, they've got no rights, they've got no future. They have to, yes master, yes master to the master. But one day, one master says, you slave, I am now going to adopt you. And as soon as he signs the adoption papers, the slave now can say, not master, but father, you're my father. You're my father. And all that the father has is now his. Yeah. So, 
The moment you believed in Jesus Christ, you became from a slave to a son. And now you can say, Father. And if you remember in Romans, Paul says, Abba, Father. And not only is he your father, that means that all heaven and all the glories of heaven are now yours. So you're adopted into his family. You're adopted. And adoption cannot be undone. When they signed the paper, and you're adopted, you're adopted. It cannot be undone. So once you become an adopted child of God, it cannot be undone. You are adopted now. The, the adopted father can't just say, get out of my house. No. They sign the paper and it's done. You are adopted. Legally, you are, have the rights to all the inheritance. And you have all that rights but the most important thing is a son adopted son you have that relationship now with the father through christ so we've looked at blessings we've looked at being chosen and we've looked at being adopted if you do a study in the bible on the word adoption yeah. and you'll find it dotted in galatians and in and in romans and then finally we'll look at the word sealing Verse 13. In whom you also trusted after you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after you believed, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. So you not only have blessings, you not only are chosen, you not only adopted, mm. But now you are sealed with the Spirit. What is sealing? In the ancient world, let's say a lady had diamonds. And she get a, a, a little box. And mm -hmm. she put her diamonds in. Mm -hmm. And she put a, a wax seal over it. And what it was saying, this is precious. This is protected. This is mine. Mm -hmm. So the moment the Holy Spirit comes in your life, yeah. you, that's the sealing of the Spirit. God is saying... They're special to me, protected, they're mine. Yeah. And that sealing of the Spirit is also a down payment of your inheritance. We have all blessings in Christ, but we don't have them all right now. We, but we have a token of those blessings. We are sealed with the Holy Spirit. So what that means is that the moment the Spirit of God comes into us, that is God saying, you have a down payment of your inheritance and it's an assurance that you're going to get more to come. It's kind of like, imagine you've got a son and the son is 10. And you give an envelope to your son with a, a wax seal on it. And he open, and you're a billionaire. Mm. So you have billions. And you give this wax envelope to your son and his son's open it and it says, when you are 18, you will inherit a million pounds. When you're 21, you will have all my billions. So he gets to 18, he's got his letter, he now has a down payment of his inheritance, he now has a million pounds, but he hasn't got all the billions. Mm. But that wax letter has shown him that he has a million, but he's going to inherit the billions. Being sealed in the spirit is the same thing. I have the Spirit of God within me. So that's God saying, right, that is my promise to you that there's more to come. The fact the Spirit of God is working in you is the fact that God has is, is fulfilled His promise and He's going to fulfill His promise to give you all these spiritual blessings. Amen. So that is the sealing of the Spirit. So we've come to the end. We've looked at blessings. We have all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. And we've been chosen. We, we, we came to God. We repented. We believed. But ultimately, it was the hand of God working in our lives. Thirdly, he's adopted us. We no longer call God as... We're no longer slaves. We are sons and daughters of the living God. 
we can go to God and say, Our Father. And then fourthly, we are sealed with the Holy Spirit. We know that there is a great inheritance. Read Romans 8. Meditate on Romans 8. Romans 8 is an exposition of verse 13, Ephesians 13. That you have this spirit within you. So we come to the end. So like I said, the, the, the whole of this chapter is great blessings. And uh, you could spend months, years, just on this one chapter. And uh, I'd encourage people to go on uh, Dr. Martin Lloyd-Jones Recording Trust. Dr. Martin Lloyd-Jones Recording Trust, he goes verse by verse. But you could spend...